Hey guys, you guys don't want to miss this episode. We have the founder of The Financial Architects as a guest, so you don't want to miss it. Stay tuned. Nayeli from the Financial Architects here and James with JM Realty. Today we are super excited because we have the myth, the man, the legend, Mr. Manny Soto from the Financial Architects and we're going to go ahead and let him introduce himself to you guys right now. Absolutely. Hello ladies and gentlemen, Manny Soto with the Financial Architects out of Chino, California. Uh, I'm just excited to be here. So uh, I'm one of the managing partners there and excited to answer any questions you guys have. For me, I'm excited because I have had a chance to meet his agents first who did a great job. And if people are a representation of their management and ownership, then it exemplifies him 100%. Because of the fact that I've worked with Nayeli, I've worked with another agent there, Brittany, and now we're teaming up not only with this channel, bring you value. This is more of an inspiration. This is more of a story of how everybody can go through a transition and make it and build, build the stamina to become successful and continue to work to be successful and have great people around you while you do it. So Manny, tell us a little bit about your story, where you started, where you going. We're not going to ask a lot of questions. This yeah. is really like Tupac, all eyes on you. We want to focus and we want <laughs> you to give the people uh, the information. And you Go know ahead, what? Please. Before Manny starts, we do want to say, like, Matt, like James said, this is more of a story of what the uh, Financial Architects is and right. how it got started. Uh, a lot of people out there are asking, uh, you know, uh, the partnership with JM Realty and the Financial Architects, and the Financial Architects is a very well-known company now, right. and so that is the reason we wanted to have many, and uh, for so many of his agents, he's our mentor. Right. He's the reason why we are where we are, so we wanted to have him here and explain to you guys a little bit about where he came from, how he got started, and the reason for his huge success now. Wait, one more thing. <laughs> also, the fact that he is very humble. Very down to earth. Like you, you, when you meet him, he's just so down to earth. He breaks down the very simplest financial strategies to personal life to help you become financially independent that it's like walking on water. So I had to add to that. Yeah. And we're not putting fluff on it. I'm glad he's smiling. <laughs> this is the absolute truth. And that's why I'm so excited that we have him today. Yes. So there you go. Man, I better come with the noise. <laughs> uh, so I, I initially started uh, roughly about 15 years ago. And uh, initially I got recruited. So I went to a, a uh, presentation and I came down and there was three gentlemen that were speaking that night and to this day I still speak with two of the three presenters in that particular um, seminar. Okay. So they talked about baby boomers and they talked about the massive wealth transfer that was happening. Now 15 years ago um, it wasn't happening yet and now we're literally in the thick of it, uh, this transition of wealth so to say. So uh, I came to the seminar, I heard the guy speak, and one thing that came out of the first presenter's mouth was, was really enlightening. Uh, he said, you need to change what you're doing to change what you're getting. Hmm. And that hit me like a ton of bricks, man. I, I was sitting in the third row, I was saying to myself, man, I'm, I'm dissatisfied with what I was currently doing. I was managing a legal department for an auto finance corporation, Triad Financial, I don't know if you guys have heard of them yeah. before. Mm -hmm. Uh, but they're one of these finance companies that, that really take advantage of uh, interest rates, if you will. And uh, I was making $76,000. I, I thought I was doing okay. And it was like that, that whole speech hit me like a ton of bricks. And um, with that one statement that he said, uh, you could tell this guy was money. He was about 31 years old. He had a tailor-made suit on. And he was probably clocking about six, seven $700,000 a year. And uh, he came out guns blazing. He's like, you know, what are you doing to, to become successful? What are you doing to, to uh, make your dreams come true for you and your family? And at the time, again, uh, I had a three and a five year old and I was serious about my future. I was serious about their future as well. So that's what got me into the industry. I mean, the trials and tribulations, whew, I could, as a matter of fact, I'm authoring a book right now. So oh, I'm going through that trials and tribulations and man, I'm just grateful for a lot of the mentors Nayeli said it the best. I was grateful for a lot of the mentors that I had uh, transitioning from my job, and it was a struggle. So let me ask you, making that transition from your job to kind of independence and management and ownership, what was one of the biggest hurdles? Was it Because a lot of people who are entrepreneurs, right, whether they're starting a t-shirt company, a clothing company, they get people who say, you know, we can't, you can't do it, you can't, all these different adversities, they get very little support. What would you say to them and share that story? Man, James, that's a... Great question, because uh, that's that's normally the challenge, is right. transitioning from where you're at today to where you want to be tomorrow. 
And uh, I would say the number one thing is mindset. Right. So kind of picture this, I, I had a job, uh, I lived in West Covina, I was traveling an hour and 15 minutes one way on, from the 605 to the 405 to Huntington Beach. And then I'd fall asleep on my way back an hour and 15 minutes on my way back and uh, it, was, it was selling me the nightmare. So I had certain beliefs such as, uh, I thought, man, you know, a company needs to take care of you, where I had to transition from company-owned stuff to now I have to be the entrepreneur. Right. So I had to think about, I, I gotta pay for my, my own office, I gotta pay for my own office supplies, I gotta pay for uh, an assistant if I wanted one, a bunch of different fascinating things is, that are parts of growing a business and, and uh, being an entrepreneur. So I, I would say the biggest challenge was switching your mindset from, you're not an employee anymore. It's your own business, you own it. You gotta take ownership of it. And don't be, don't be uh, carrying around your, your little red wagon while you're doing it. Yeah, so. so Manny, tell our viewers a little bit about what drives you to be the mentor that you are to all of your agents and people, anybody that you come across mm -hmm. to really. What drives you to be that person to them and to really inspire them with what you're doing? Uh, I, man, you got, did you write these questions down? No. <laughs> no. That's a great question too. Um, here's what I think about when I, when I actually get in front of people. It's like I'm constantly coaching, constantly delivering a message. And you might say something to a group of 20 or 50 or 100 or 1,000 people, and you are literally talking to one person in the third row. Right. So, so what I like to do when I, when I quote unquote mentor somebody or I like to take participation in their future is I'll make them think something currently and with the message in, in interlined that is going to come around in two months and they're going to go, you told me that. You said that was going to happen. So I'm like sweeping the, the floor for them to travel in and part of that is these subliminal messages that you're going through. Okay. So if it's, if it's being an entrepreneur, I'll, I'll use third person. So I'll say, um, yeah, I had, a, I had a recruit two years ago that said, oh man, I have a job and it's really difficult, so this, that, and the other. And I'll use that story to actually get into somebody's mindset mm -hmm. long term. So, so what drives me to do that is I know that I had a mentor and I had somebody that was going to take me under their wing that cared about me and I care about those people's success as well. So I learned a lot through the transition of making that happen. So. Their, their success is the most important thing for me. I'm doing good, I'm doing fine, I'll, I'll be fine right. without them, but their success is my primary focus. And that's very rare you find people like that, right? Because even in the struggle we just talked about as far as moving forward in life and doing better and making that change, people always, I think we've all heard it, you change it. Who do you think you are? You think you're Absolutely. better than us now? Mm -hmm. And it's not that. You just want to better yourself as a person. And the fact that he gives more consideration to the next person to help to uplift them shows a lot as far as character. Let me say something else on, on that note Please. because I'm glad that you brought that up because, you know, a lot of people, they, they get into the mode of uh, they, go to home, they go to work, they come home, they pay the bills, they go to work to pay bills, go to work to pay bills, go to work to pay bills. They have literally no goal in the future. So that's another aspect of it when you get in front of your your agent is, hey, what what are you looking to accomplish here? What, what is the, the short-term and long-term and mid-term goal that you're looking to accomplish? And how is it going to affect your family? Because that's that's their primary focus. Right. So when I speak to them about that, I let them know up front and, and personally, I say, look, I'm the broker. So if if you're doing something and I'm making the recommendation to do it, you do know that I make more money by telling you stuff. Right. So if I'm telling you stuff that you're disagreeing with, I'm making more money by right. you growing. So why would I tell you anything that is not going to help? Beneficial, that's right. It's it's right. in your best interest. Right. So it makes a difference. Totally. It does. So let me ask you, financial architects, what are your goals? Twenty how how long have you been with the financial architects? Well, uh, I transitioned out of my, I call it my practice company, uh, about six years ago. Okay. And uh, I'm not going to mention their name, but um, I transitioned out of that company and I, I opened my own firm about you know, six months, nine months after that. Okay. And uh, I didn't have any real goals. It was just me, I'm, I'm going to get a bigger contract and I'm going to go produce. Gotcha. And uh, there, there was a young man that changed that because he was, he was very impressionable. I, I, I felt like I needed to help him out. 
And uh, that was about two years ago where we really started to, to get it going. Uh, so I'd say anywhere between a year and a half to two years ago, we just started. Okay. So you talk about all these different things. We're just, this is the tip of the iceberg. Okay. So this year in 2018, we'll grow to about 150 agents. Okay. Uh, but our ultimate goal is a five-year goal where we're going to have 20 different offices and over 500 different agents. We talk about it all the time, me and the right. full-timers. So to have that type of goal, it takes a lot of vision to actually get there. But where there is no vision, the people will perish, let me tell you. Absolutely. And I would think that Nyla is going to be one of those office owners. Yes, coming soon. absolutely. Absolutely. I would think so. Without a doubt. Mm -hmm. That's a great yeah. job. So you have a book coming, you said, soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we want to have you back. Sure. Maybe a sure. different under a different platform and talk about the book, push the book, help yeah. the book. Thank but you. what we wanted to do is just give you the insight as to why we partner with the financial architects, the value that they bring, and then you hear from not only the agents that we work with, but from the man himself, and that makes all the difference in the world. Because if you can see what the root is down to everyone else, you know it's a great company. You know yeah. it's a great value. And, and like we said it earlier, you guys are already aware that financial the financial architects is such a uh, renowned name now and there's a lot of companies out there not just Remax a lot of companies out there teaming up and partnering Absolutely. with the financial architects yes. because of what they provide um, what we provide is experience the mentorship that Manny uh, offers all of us as agents is key to who we are in terms of partnering up with your company so the financial architects will continue to partner up with all the companies in Southern California so just wait for it and uh, we're happy to have you Manny yeah for sure um, thank you and yeah and not only that when you come to them they're trustworthy right like you just said he's not trying to put you in something that's not going to benefit you regardless of the amount that can be made he's going to be and the agent's going to be ethical transparent and Absolutely. they're going to make sure that you're set up for the future not only for yourself but for your uh, your family and anything else that you want to achieve as far as goals one thing with that uh just so the viewers understand this right. more as well you know when you have companies like aig and pacific life and uh, prudential all these are big name companies right. So they do background investigations on, on those types of people. Absolutely. I don't know if they know it or not, mm -hmm. but you know you, you can't have felony. You can't have all these different things in your background. Not to say that, that that's a, a lack of character that happened 20 and 30 years ago, right. but you know those types of, of uh, background investigations are done inside of the insurance and investment companies. Mm -hmm. So everything from 401k rollovers or life insurance or, uh, hey, do I have to pay taxes on a 1099 basis? A W-2 or or a, a K K-1 distribution, you know, all these different business entity questions and all these different business uh, uh, associate questions that come up in the conversation. It's not a one size fits all. So right. if I got a size six shoe and you have a size nine foot, nice shoe but doesn't fit. You right. know, it, every every shoe size is going to be different. And with the financial architects, that's exactly what we do: is we tailor. But whatever your your goal is mm -hmm. in the future, and we put the actual plan together that's going to make sense for you. Perfect. That's that's well said. There you go. Yeah. Now you know. So with that being said, thank you, Manny. I, mean, I couldn't help but smile the whole interview. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to hold it in, but I really couldn't. Because, uh, I've been waiting for this for some time. He finally had to say, and not only that, he yeah. took time out of his busy schedule as far as being oh, a yeah. managing partner to come sit with us. And we're just starting as far as this channel and mm -hmm. these episodes. So it just says a lot, and I'm very, very grateful. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Thank you. All right. Appreciate it. <laughs>